Quad 66. And Captain Ryder here. We've got a very, very, very different video here. Um, in this video, what we're doing is talking about dynamic idle. Dynamic idle is what I think a very, very interesting new feature put into Betaflight um, by Thorsten Logs, aka. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. I hope I'm not, not butchering it. Um, also goes by Joe Lucid. And it's a really interesting feature that also seems to, to um, create a lot of confusion in terms of people not understanding what it does and why it's so interesting. And uh, I was responsible for some of the suggested edits that went into the description and people still found it confusing. So I feel a little responsibility to try and uh, explain it a little bit better. And I'm doing the video this way because I want to actually be able to draw stuff and um, kind of illustrate it that way. Um, I'm going to talk right through the background noise because I'm in the middle of the kitchen here. Okay, <clears throat> so with dynamic idle, the first question is what does, or the first thing to go through is what does idle actually do? So your idle, when your quad is sitting there with no throttle input, um, the idle is just kind of going at a, a regular speed until the PID loop gets active. And then the PID loop um, changes the idle because it has to try and that's how it's correcting things. And so where you set your idle set point affects the acceleration response. So um, from a very slow uh, RPM, it's really hard to spin up the motors. And so the lower your idle is, the harder it is to spin up those motors. So the higher, higher your idle, it increases your response to acceleration. The lower your idle, the less responsive it is to acceleration. The other thing idle does is it imposes a braking limit. So if you can't go below idle, then how slow you can slow down the motor to generate braking, it goes down to that floor level, that braking limit. Then the last thing that idle does is it gives you your desync protection. So whatever that lowest limit that the idle can go down to is your desync protection. Um, in order to control these values, in the past it was, and I'm sure you probably can't read this at all, my handwriting's terrible, sorry about that. Um, but the D-shot idle value that you input as a percent and then the idle min RPM is the new parameter for dynamic idle. And that you put in as a number value, and it's in the value is in RPM rather than a thrust percent. And I'll get into why that is. So, and here kind of comes into why I wanted to um, draw this because when we have wow, this is weird. When we have motors, right, spinning props, the ideal thing is that if these are both spinning and let this kind of represent our our sort of idle midpoint, then what we want to do when the PID loop is active, so if the PID loop says, say for example, our motors are tilting this way and it wants to correct it this way, then what we want to do is if this motor is drifting up too high, we want to slow this motor down and we want to spin this motor up to bring it back. And if we can pivot around this set point, then it keeps that set point even because we can just pivot right around it and, and adjust to it. And so that's the ideal situation. That's what we want. And this is what dynamic idle does. If you don't use dynamic idle, things happen a little bit differently. So say again, this is kind of your set point. And now say again, we're kind of rolling this way, right? And what you want to do is you want to compensate for this by decreasing this one and increasing this one to counteract that force. That's what the PID loop wants to do. But the way it works right now is if you don't have dynamic idle is you can only accelerate. So instead of decelerating this, what you have to put on is an acceleration here and you actually have to double it because you can't decelerate. And so what happens here is that the midpoint, instead of pivoting around that midpoint, you actually raise it up. And so your, your um, idle set point actually gets pushed up because we're only increasing, we're not slowing this motor down. And so instead of pivoting around that set point, what we're actually doing is that this side stays set and we're only pushing up on this side. And that's why um, this situation is sub-ideal. And so this is why you get wind up. And the wind up or the spin up, this only happens when you have air mode activated. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother um, discussion. But um, it, it, this happened, uh, air mode kind of allows you to do some things. But anyways, we'll skip on that. So, if you just use the current D-shot value, then this is what happens. If you add in dynamic idle, then this is what happens.
So we're going to go back into our ideal scenario now. Okay, and we have our idle set point. And now say again, yes, we're kind of, we're rolling this way, and so we, the PID loop wants to correct it. And so to correct around that, we're slowing this motor down and speeding this motor up. So this sounds like a great situation unless you get into a situation where if you have um, reverse airflow. So now I'm going to draw these big arrows um, to kind of represent reverse airflow. So that's like, for example, if you're coming out of a, a loop or something or a, or, a, or a spin. And maybe my representation of it isn't perfect, but I'll get the concept across here. So if you're reversing your airflow and you're already slowing this motor down, this airflow is going to further slow this motor down, and you can see it's going to be like an additive effect. And so if you're over slowing this motor down, what can happen here is this is how you can end up with your desync because that motor gets too slow. So what we need to do to prevent that is to add in an extra value. And that extra value creates a floor. And that extra value, that's your, um, that was my cheat sheet here. I always forget what they call it, the idle min RPM. Yeah, so idle min RPM. So your idle min RPM creates that floor value so this motor can't slow down um, too slow to get into desyncs. And that's the reason that this motor, this value is put in as an RPM because it creates a floor that this motor RPM will never go below and that's what's gonna prevent your, your desync. If you put it in as a percentage like your um, D shot idle value, then you can create the situation where it can go too low because if you're in a negative flow situation, it's just percentage, you're not enforcing a um, minimum idle value. So then, one of the questions I had was then, okay, great. Why don't we put in both of these values, both D shot? Um, why don't we put in both D shot? These are supposed to be propellers. I don't know if that came across right. Anyways, motors, little propellers. Um, the reason that we don't put in D shot idle value um, as a motor RPM is because it's going to give you a different level of feel to it depending on the flow. So for example, if we're in a big um, negative flow situation versus a big um, positive flow situation, if you enforce a specific RPM value on both of these, although your RPM is going to be the same, it's going to make that set point feel like it's doing more or less depending on that situation. So that's why for the D shot idle value, uh, what's it called, value, you put it in as a percentage. So when you put it in as a percentage, irrespective of the flow situation, um, you get the same feel of it. And so again, what I mean by flow is like, for example, if you're finishing up a snap roll or you're coming out of a dive or something, depending on how the quad is moving through the air, um, that's what I mean by this airflow. So by putting this in as a, as a percent, it gets rid of this sort of difference response and it keeps that response feeling normal. Okay. Um, Ryder, does that make sense at all? Yes. If just keep listening and listen hard, because to me this is pretty important. Okay, good. I like the endorsement. Just listen, listen, listen. Okay, so let's talk about one last thing. Let's talk about braking. So if we're trying to if we're trying to break and all we can do, so for example, we are coming out of a maneuver and we want to um, kind of resist the force. And what we want to do is um, slow down this motor and speed up that one. We can brake more if we can go below this midpoint value. So if we can go below the D shot idle value, we can generate more braking force on this decelerating motor. And that's a good thing. When you're using D shot um, idle value as a percent without the dynamic idle, then instead of being able to break this motor, remember you can't go as low because you can't go below this. So if you think of it as this becomes like a little floor here, and so if you're using the current setup or the, the traditional setup of using just D shot idle value, that creates a floor 
for this um, motor when it's braking, so it can't go below that. And what that, real, what that means is that this little section over here, you have to throw it up here and add it there, and so it becomes unbalanced. So to be able to pivot around that set point, you need dynamic idle value. Okay. Um, so in terms of how, how much of a real world um, impact does this make? I honestly don't know. I haven't tried it on and off and back and forth and tuned things around um, enough to know 100%, but it sounds in theory absolutely like the right way to go. And I'm good with that. That's enough for me to kind of pursue it more. So to, to quickly summarize, what, what do you want to do? So in terms of tuning this thing, I think number one, what you want to do is you, your, um, where's my cheat sheet writer? Any more cheat sheet? There it is. Perfect. Okay. So your idle min um, RPM. Okay. So your idle min RPM, that's a number value in terms of RPM. And what you want to set this at, you want to send it so that it prevents desyncs. This is your desync safety net. So what you want to do is you want to set this at a value that's going to keep you out of trouble, keep you from desyncing. Then on um, D shot idle value, what you want to set this at is you want to set it at the maximum that you can do where you're not getting um, it where it's not too floaty. Maximum value um, for responsiveness. Can you even read that? My writing's so horrible. Okay. I can read it through the camera. Good. Okay. So you want your D shot idle value, and again, this is a percentage, and this is going to control your feel of how um, how your motors feel in response to acceleration and you want to set this to, to maximize your responsiveness, but you don't, want it, you don't want it so bad that you get too much floatiness. So if you set this value too high, you're going to end up with that floaty kind of feeling, and so um, that's where you, you don't want to go to it. In terms of how does this translate, so if you go from, uh, if you go straight from uh, how you've been doing it with just the D shot idle value and you use dynamic idle, in general, what you're actually going to have to do is you're going to have to increase your D shot idle value percentage. And the reason for that is because we're pivoting around um, our set point instead of, instead of um, uh, going around it. So remember, let's draw it up one more time. With dynamic, I misspelled that. That's okay. With dynamic, remember what we're doing is we're pivoting around it. And when we pivot around this, this stays net neutral. And with our traditional, we weren't pivoting around it. And because we weren't pivoting around it, we were just doubling up on our increasing and that led to artificially inflated, um, I should put like a box around it or something to, so this is what you end up with is you end up inflating your uh, your your D shot value, your idle value, by spinning the motors up. And so what happens is when you go to dynamic, what you actually need to do is you need to bring this point up to what you were used to over here. And so that's why there's a difference. It may not make sense to people initially, but that's why with when you're using dynamic idle, you actually want to increase your uh, D shot idle value. Ryder, what questions do you have? Anything? I don't know, but um, I'm just going to tell you, if you really need a chance to read the handwriting, just pause the video. Yeah, I, I think it's my handwriting is a problem. I, wanted, I was going to do a PowerPoint. Ryder said no. Anyways, okay, that's what I got. Um, Questions, please post the questions. I'll try and respond here and um, hopefully get you all sorted out on this. Until next time. Cheers.